Welcome to episode three of the Diet by God's Design podcast. In the last episode, we started our series on diet guidelines that I use, and we talked about honesty. And today we're going to jump into the next guideline of realism. So let's dig in to being realistic. In the last episode, honesty is something that we talked about. Again, I believe that is fundamentally essential in order for all these other guidelines to work. So if you haven't listened to that episode, I recommend you go listen to that. So when you're honest with yourself, you can be realistic about your strengths, your weaknesses, and your needs. And these are all going to be different for you versus, you know, different for me than for you. So everyone's got a difference in how changes happen. Some of us have changes that happen quickly, cut cold turkey, and that's great. Some of us just need slower changes. Some of us have weaknesses in areas like the grocery store, and others power through a grocery store not being tempted by anything. What things look like for different people, how they create habits, how they make healthy changes in their lives, just looks different. And so that really starts with just being realistic with who you are, what you need, What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? And I want to revisit this point one more time because I think it's really critical. We ended the last episode with this food for thought. But if you're unable to be honest with yourself, you've really got to ask the question, do you want to change? So if you make a change or you're trying to make a change, you say, I want to lose weight. You come up with a plan of, I'm not going to eat out anymore. You know, you're going through the week and things get busy and all of a sudden you're eating one fast food meal and you're like, it's okay, I'm just busy, this is a one-time thing, it's not going to happen again. And then later that week something comes up and you go get fast food again because your friends want to go eat and you want to go eat with your friends, so fast food's what you eat. And you just find yourself violating that boundary that you've, you've set for the healthy change that's an area where you've got to ask the question, do you really want to change? Are you committed to this? If you do want to change, maybe cutting cold turkey is just not for you. And that's totally okay. Not everyone can cut cold turkey. Some of us just need to be encouraged little step by little step. And that's totally fine. Again, if you're unable to be honest with yourself, if you're not able to make changes, you really need to dig into the question of, do I want to change? And then the second question to that, are you ready to change? Are there some things in your life that has to change in order for you to change? That question should be something you seriously consider. I think it's a very important question for all of us to ask. Are we ready to change that part of our life? If not, maybe some things we need to work on some other things before we're ready to target what we eat or eating out fast food, things like that. Now, the third question again, if you're unable to be honest with yourself, Dealing with your current symptoms, your health symptoms that you have right now, how much worse do your symptoms and your health have to get before you're ready to change? And that's a big question. And again, I want you to revisit that and really dig into that. Be realistic. Be honest. Ask that question and dig into, am I ready to do something and when will I be ready to do it? Because you can go around saying, I'm just not ready, I'm just not ready. But if you never address the question, when will I be ready? What has to happen for me to be ready? I think that's a valid question to ask to get you out of being stagnant and complacent and moving towards better health. We just need to be moving towards better health. Again, perfection is not the key here. It's just improvement. Getting back to being realistic, the reason why we've got to ask ourselves, what are our strengths? What are our weaknesses? What are our needs? Are we ready to change? The reason why we ask those questions is so that we set up healthy boundaries for ourselves. Healthy boundaries like when to do something or when not to do something, not putting yourself in a compromising situation. Another thing with being realistic with yourself is hashing out your expectations for yourself. What is realistic for you in changing? Is it a fast change? Is it a slow change? Maybe if you're, you selected a slow change and you're changing much more frequently, then maybe you can change and revisit your expectations and change that. And that's okay. But setting from the start some expectations so you know where you should be headed and how quickly or slowly. The third thing I would say with 
being realistic and why we go through all these questions and digging into this is so that you find accountability because we all need accountability. It's so easy to get in the the flow of things and mess up and then, you know, that one little pushing the boundaries, that one little bit then becomes pushing the boundaries a lot and all the time unless we have some accountability. And so finding accountability is really important. And it all goes back to if you're honest with yourself, if you can be realistic, then you're going to have successful accountability as long as you find someone who you can be open and honest with and who will hold you accountable. A good example of being realistic with yourself, I think of, I'm going to go back to my chocolate analogy. If you know you have a chocolate weakness, you know that if you go to the grocery store and you let yourself go down the aisle of the candy section, you know that passing by all that candy is tempting for you, then don't go down that aisle. If you know that checking out at the grocery store, seeing all the candy there is tempting enough, then you know don't even, don't make eye contact, as they say. Put yourself in situations to avoid your weaknesses. If you know that you shouldn't have chocolate in the house because you'll binge on it, don't have it in the house. However, you can set up times or special events because it's not that chocolate is wrong. It's just when it's easily accessible, then you might get on the binging streak, which if you know that about yourself, if you're realistic in that area, you say, okay, well then on my birthday, I can have some chocolate and I'll only buy this much. I won't go out for Halloween this year because I know I'll binge on all the Hershey chocolates that I get. Whatever it is, the point is to be realistic with your needs, your weaknesses, your strengths, and to mold what you do around those, around your strengths, your weaknesses, and your needs so that you set yourself up for success when you're dieting. I just want to say, no one is judging you for eating that piece of chocolate. No one is judging you for eating that bowl of ice cream. You admit that to your accountability partner, your accountability partner's like, not going to say, oh, because you failed this in this one area, I just cannot be your friend. I cannot be your accountability partner anymore. We, I think, especially women, are so much more critical about ourselves than others. But we make up this belief that if we mess up one time, that we lose our value, we lose our worthiness. And that's not, it's not it. Don't throw in the towel. You eat that piece of chocolate, do not throw in the towel. That shame and that guilt from doing that will tempt you to do that. So do not give in. Listen, no one is perfect, including me, the dietitian. Do not hold out on that. Do not hold out on being perfect. All these Instagram stories and accounts and people that are just so fit and they look good. Listen, they make mistakes too. And that's okay. At the end of the day, the goal is not perfection. It's just improvement. So do better next time. That's all that we can do. That's all I have for the diet guideline of realism. So now let's get to the giveaway reminder. This week only, I am giving away one hour of goals coaching session to a random winner where we will go over your top health goals and dig into what's blocking you from reaching them and come up with an actionable plan. So only one person will win this giveaway. You can enter this giveaway by subscribing to this podcast, writing a review for it, and tagging a friend in the comments of my Instagram or Facebook podcast launch post. And the link is in the show notes. You do this by Friday, this Friday at 11.59 p.m. Eastern. And the winner will be announced on Instagram Saturday. And I want to be clear, this is one winner for this giveaway. You must be 18 years or older and live in the U.S. to qualify for entry. That is all I have for this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you haven't joined that giveaway yet. And I would highly recommend it. And if you haven't listened to the first two episodes, I highly recommend that too. Thank you again for stopping by and listening. And I hope that you will stick with it and become a subscriber.